Hey you guys, it's Bird today. We're here to talk for a few minutes about Connections, which is the group that Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt were both a part of, and their website is still live as of September 4th. Um, so I wanted to kind of explore the website a little bit and talk about what they were offering and how kind of scary this actually is, but nevertheless, I have some updated thoughts. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so first things first, I need to correct how I've been pronouncing Ruby's last name. I had always pronounced it as Frank because I had heard other commentary channels over the years say Ruby and Kevin Frank. But now with all of this coming out, I started hearing Ruby and Kevin Frankie. And so I wanted to kind of look and see because I had never heard Ruby actually say her full name. Um, during the time that I had seen videos here and there, but she actually pronounces it Frank E. So I stand corrected. I will uh, going forward be pronouncing it Frankie, and that is my correction for today. But let's talk about connections. There have been all kinds of new videos going around social media, kind of highlighting some of the problematic advice that connections Jody and uh, Ruby would give out to parents. I think the scariest thing to me is that there were people that were actually paying money to access the information that Ruby and Jody were putting out through connections. Now I've seen some of the TikToks that came from their YouTube channel when it was still live, but the fact that people are willing to pay $218 for this pre-recorded intro masterclass really makes me question a whole lot. It says here that it's $218. It's a six week online course with pre-recorded videos with examples and guidelines of applying the principles of a connection. And you'll sign up and get a copy of the workbook, a digital workbook that's 296 pages, 12 week access to the Saturday mentorship class, mental health and relationship webinar with Jody, Jody Hildebrandt, every Saturday morning and a six month access to the pre-recorded intro uh, masterclass. So obviously, you know, they're really selling you on how much access you'll be receiving once you pay them this fee. But my problem is the advice that they were giving out to people when it comes to parenting and mental health and things like SA, who on earth is going to listen to this and actually apply it to their lives? Because if you are going to listen to somebody like this and apply it to your parenting style or uh, apply it to your mental health journey, that is extremely scary to even consider because she's been on record saying that things like grape is a choice. And we've talked before about how Ruby thinks that anxiety and depression are choices. Everything is a choice to these women. So just backwards and demented and a really scary message to be sending out to people. No, in this home, you don't get personal space because this is my space because I'm the parent. If you want your own personal space, you'll need to get your own space. This is mine. And as long as you're living in my home, it is my job to know everything about you. You don't get to sneak. You don't get to hide. You don't get to have secrets. Not in my house. Do you see how loving that is? Now, if you're in distortion, you're reeling right now. If you're in distortion, you're, you're, you're ready to, you're ready to pull your hair out right now. You're ready to scream. So think about how that. So if you don't want to have a baby, then do not use your agency to engage in contact. Now, I know that nobody talks about that anymore. Like nobody, nobody. I don't hear that from anyone, like abstinence, abstinence. That used to be around when I was a kid, abstinence. But nobody says that anymore because everybody feels like they have a right to just do whatever they want. And then they have these, these consequences, these outcomes of STDs or pregnancy or, or you know, rape and they, they, 
they don't want to take any responsibility for their participation in it. Now, when I say rape, what I'm talking about is you engage in a sexual relationship and then you may say, stop. And the person's like, I'm not stopping. I'm going to take what I want. I'm not talking about like someone attacks you and forces you. I'm talking about your participation. And then at some point you say, I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. And you know, because the person you're with just says, I don't care what you want, because that's the kind of person you've chosen to hook up with. You are a soul. You have a spirit inside you. Your spirit is governed by living and choosing principles of truth. And when people understand what that means, principles of truth, then they have outcomes because they use their agency to choose principles of truth. And one of our children uh, showed up in a real concerning way. And we knew that we had a certain amount of years before this child was going to be an adult and be out on his own. And so we said, what is the most loving thing that we can do for this child? Having him go to a wilderness therapy camp was what we came up with. And we wanted to give this child the best shot at truth. And he was there living um, on the ground of the Arizona desert for months. And he's, he, because he was separated from the distraction, because he was separated from um, um, the addictions that he had at home, and he was only face to face with literally the earth. He, it was him the sun and the dirt. And when on a good day, he, he would have, you know, beans and rice and he could eat foliage <laughs> as he hiked. Um, he would distill water from streams. He learned how to build a fire from sticks. He started developing, uh, oh, I, I can survive. I can do hard things. I, I'm still here without getting everything that I want. And, and he didn't come home and was all of a sudden living in truth. It was just a wake up call. It was a little taste of what truth could look like and could feel like. And then we were able to work for, with him from there to really invite him to keep what he learned in the wilderness and then integrate it into living back home. You gave me my life back by taking my life away one of the fastest ways to stop enabling it is to kick her out because then you don't have to deal with it at all she can go be angry on the street corner but my guess is because you're so enabling you wouldn't do that but you can do that and i would encourage you to do that if she's got enough anger to bark and bite at you she's not too sick people who are really sick with cardiac issues they don't behave like that they start humbling like oh my gosh i could die or I may not have a place to live. I can't go to work. I've got to take care of my body and they humble. This young woman doesn't seem too alarmed about her physiological issues. So when you say, how do I live in truth? I've just given you numerous examples of what you can do. Are you willing? Or are you gonna tell me that that's not realistic? It is realistic. It's just that you're not willing to have the outcomes. You don't want her to have those outcomes because you don't want those outcomes. So I don't know what else to tell you because anything shy of you not kicking her out of the house is not going to help this young woman because she doesn't feel anything. She's numb. Now, I don't know if you're paying for therapy. If you're paying for therapy, I'd say I'm stopping. I'm not paying for therapy. I don't know what 21 year old can afford to go to therapy. So that's something else you could do. But don't go into the therapist and say, she's being mean and she needs to be nice. You sound like a two-year-old. Don't do that. You don't get to control what she says in therapy, but you can say, I'm done paying for it. I don't know if she's being reinforced by her therapist. I don't know. I hope she's not, but she could be because therapists across the board are quite enabling. Children go into these TV shows and they're not saved by the bell. These are Stranger Things. Um, these are other TV shows that contain pornography, violence, um, incredible upsetting themes. And they go into this and then where do you come out? 
There's no interruption. You can binge season after season after season without stopping. And then when you're done and you go back into the real world, <laughs> the real world, you, you're you engaged in a society where children really are enabled to think they're equal to the adults. Children um, are enabled to think that they actually know more than the adults. You've got children who are deciding what their outcomes are. You, you've got children who are deciding whether or not they're going to be uh, disciplined or not. I think it's really interesting because on the Connections website, it gives you this little pop-up to stay updated, subscribe to get our latest news below. The sample name and email that they give you here is Ruby Frankie, and the sample email is 8passengers at gmail.com. Considering some of the advice that they have given, it's just very scary to me. There's other things that they offer like Empowering Joy Community, $21 a month, men's and women's teams, meet with a group of men or women for 90 minutes each to empower each other and heal ch and change. Jody moderates each team, 75 a week, three month commitment, one-on-one -on -one training with Jody, meet with Jody Hildebrandt, um, MS, one-on-one -on -one for 50 minutes, $181 a session. This is obviously also a very good time as a reminder to, you know, I'm, I'm a big advocate for therapy. I, I like therapy. I think that it can do really good things for people, depending on kind of what chapter you are in your life, whether you're, you know, a 20 year old, a 50 year old, I don't care, but I think that therapy can do really good things. But if people would come across this website and then do some research on who Jody is, they would also see that her license was suspended and she broke trust of her, uh, between her and a client by going to her church and telling all this client's business and how they had a corn addiction and that was just, you know, Breaking trust with a client like that could literally send that client over the edge. And what would Jody Hildebrand have done if that client did do something that was irreversible? Do you actually think that she is going to sit there and care or help the family or do anything aside from continue on her, uh, you know, voyage to, you know, continue to ruin people's lives? No, she's not going to do anything. I think the pricing of this is absolutely insane. And the fact that there are people that were willing to spend this money to take advice from Ruby and Jody here is extremely scary. Some of the advice that they were giving out to people was just completely worthless. And to think that people were paying for this advice is extremely scary. The other thing that I want to say is I pinned a comment on my last eight passengers video that um, Kevin has been spotted. Kevin went to the Frankie residence in Utah. He showed up with a uh, pillow and a piece of luggage and was photographed still wearing his wedding ring. Now, is he still wearing the wedding ring because he knew that people would be there photographing him? I don't know. Is he still wearing the wedding ring because they're only separated and not fully divorced yet and that's just what he wants to do? Maybe. I'm not sure. I think that there are a lot of questions that Kevin needs to answer because while I have changed my stance on Ruby's sisters and their involvement and kind of what they tried to do to help these kids over the last three years. The thing that I do not agree with is the thought that Kevin had no clue what was going on with these children. That is what I disagree with. I think that Kevin knew certain information, but I also do believe that Ruby had, you know, kind of closed the door on him. But at the same time, he has different access than her sisters did. 
So I am curious, like, what's going to go on with Kevin? Is he going to be held accountable? What's going to go on with that? Kevin Frankie has finally been spotted. He, of course, is in the middle of a ton of drama right now. His wife, Ruby, and her business partner, Jody, have both been arrested, and four of his six children are currently in the care of DCFS. He, however, is apparently still wearing his wedding ring. So Kevin was seen outside of their Springville, Utah home wearing his wedding ring on Saturday. Rumors are swirling that apparently he was kicked out of the family home last year. He actually arrived home with some sort of travel bag and his pillow. So here he is with his pillow and his travel bag just arriving at the home. While he was there, workmen arrived to actually take the YouTube decal off of Ruby Frankie's van. This is the branding she had on the back of her van. So it had the YouTube logo along with the eight passengers. And of course the license plate said eight passengers as well. This is what it looks like now. Apparently the YouTube eight passengers has been removed. My guess is YouTube did not want their branding on her van anymore. Kevin has been MIA since all of this went down. His lawyer did share a brief statement this week saying that Kevin's urgent focus is simply to keep his children together under his fatherly care. Of course, four of his minor children have been taken into DCFS custody this week and his wife and her business partner have been arrested and they are facing charges. Neighbors have said that when Kevin left the family home, that it appeared the children stopped going to school. And one of the daughters in particular had been going to the homes of anyone that had children asking if they could come out and play, not realizing the other children were all in school still. Neighbors around the family home have spoken up saying how upset they are that they tried to get help for the children and they feel nothing was done. Ruby and her four children had been living at her business partner, Jody Hildebrand's home. The neighbors have also been interviewed around that home, and they said that they've seen hardly any signs of the children, definitely no sounds of them playing outside or anything like that. One neighbor said she witnessed the children, the four youngest, outside weeding the yard one day when temperatures were in three digits, and she said it got so hot that she had to go inside, and the children remained outside for quite some time weeding the garden. It's still unknown right now whether or not Kevin Frankie will regain custody of his children or not. The really crazy thing to me too is, you know, with these family vloggers, we constantly talk about the money that's made on, on the kids' backs. And now we have Ruby on her way to hopefully prison for a, a, an extended period of time for what she did. And this beautiful house that was bought by her exploiting her children for YouTube money. And these kids are in the care of DCFS. So these kids had, and I'm not saying that money means everything. I am not saying that, but in this situation, eight passengers made a ton of money because of their children. And now these kids have a mother who is going to prison a father who, who knows what's going to go on with him. And they're just left with pain, hurt, trauma, PTSD, neglect, an unhealthy relationship with food, and nothing but hurt. That is what Ruby Frankie has left with these children. It's showing here that there was some damage to their front door. Not sure if that was done by the police officers. YouTube also requested that they remove the YouTube logo off of their van, which is not surprising at all. But you know, Jody's home, the photos that have been released of her home, which is obviously where the children were um, at when all of this happened, her home kind of, you know, looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, like she has neighbors, but it looks very secluded and it doesn't look like a normal neighborhood, like a bunch of houses are around or anything like that. Connections, man. I, I don't, people in my real life that are parents, I don't know anybody who would even look at Ruby or Jody and think, let me give them money for parenting advice. Just doesn't seem like a, thing that would happen but tell me how you guys feel about all that down below for now if you like the video please leave a like and a comment and if you'd like to see more from me in the future please subscribe i'll see you guys soon bye